Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to talk about our work on going beyond dual execution, multi-party computation for functions with efficient verification. This is joint work with Kermit Hazai and Abhishalad. As you all know, secure multi-party computation allows uh, a group of mutually distrustful parties to jointly compute some function f over their private inputs in such a way that they learn nothing beyond the output of the function. There are several settings in which multi-party computation or MPC has been uh, explored. Uh, a couple of the categories that are relevant to this work are the kind of corruption and the number of parties corrupted. Semi-honest versus malicious or passive versus active. This is the kind of corruption uh, that we are used to. And in terms of the number of parties corrupted, there are two distinct categories. One is honest majority, where an adversary can corrupt only a minority of the participants. And the other stronger setting is uh, dishonest majority. Some of our results are going to apply to honest majority, but for the most part, our results here are going to be for the strongest setting, which is uh, allowing an active adversary that can uh, corrupt uh, all but one of the parties. Several applications to multi-party computation and you know, uh, more recently applications of MPC to do uh, secure machine learning has been uh, on the rise. A standard blueprint for designing secure multi-party computation with active security is to first design a protocol that is secure only against a passive adversary and then amplify it. This talk is about understanding what is the overhead of achieving this active security over passive, or in other words, what is the overhead of step two in this blueprint? I'm going to start with the classic garble circuit protocol of, uh, of Yao. This is a two-party computation protocol for uh, Boolean computations. It proceeds as follows. There is a garbler, Bob, and an evaluator, Alice. Bob garbles the function uh, you know, with his input uh, encoded. Alice and Bob engage in oblivious transfer where Alice gets a garbled form of her input and then Bob transmits his, uh, the garbled version of uh, the function and using the garbled input and the garbled circuit, Alice will be able to evaluate the function on her input X. As such, this protocol already has some features against active corruption. The way I've described it is the passive version of this protocol, but this already achieves some security against active corruption. In fact, uh, an adversary corrupting the evaluator here cannot, uh, cannot do anything beyond giving the input to the oblivious uh, transfer. On the other hand, if you consider this protocol, where Bob is malicious, in fact, he can launch an attack. Since he garbles the function, there is a way by which he can garble an arbitrary function, not quite arbitrary, but something that is different from the function intended for the computation and make Alice evaluate this, uh, this function. So this protocol is secure against an active corruption of Alice or the evaluator, but is not secure against uh, an active uh, corruption of Bob or the garble. Now, there has been uh, a lot of works in the past decade trying to get concretely efficient versions of this compilation from passive Yao to uh, active uh, to active security, and in fact. Uh, the best, at least asymptotic state of the art is uh, the work of Hazai et al, which matches the passive protocol on several parameters. It matches a number of rounds, the communication complexity, the number of calls to the underlying pseudo-random generator to build the garbled circuit, and the number of oblivious transfer calls. So as such, the overhead from passive to active, when you look at the communication, this is, you know, constant overhead and this is nice. However, the computational overhead is still exorbitant. Not just this work, but also all previous work, the computational overhead of getting active security is an order of magnitude higher than uh, passive. So in this work, we're going to try to reduce this overhead. 
And the first step we're going to do is we're going to concede to some leakage. And the rationale is that, you know, now this is being practical. We want to apply multi-party computation for large computations, for big data. We want to do machine learning computation and we want active security in many of these scenarios. And the overhead is still pretty high for this uh, to be uh, practical. So the goal I'm going to say here is that we want to get active security with constant overhead, both communication and computation, over the passive security where we're going to concede to some amount of leakage. So in the context of leakage, in fact, one of the very first works that you know came towards getting an actively secure version of the Yao protocol is this beautiful work of Mohasel and Franklin which where they introduce the dual execution paradigm. So here they want to take the Yaos protocol and come up with a new protocol, which will give some form of security against active corruptions of both the garbler and the evaluator. And roughly the idea is as follows. Instead of doing the protocol once, you're going to do it twice with the roles being reversed in each of these executions. So Bob's going to be the garbler in the first, Alice is going to be the garbler in the, in the second. And as you, as you already know, we know that this protocol is actively secure against the evaluator, which means that in both these executions, we are guaranteed at least one of these executions, the garbler is going to be honest and is the result of the computation is going to be correct. So if we do this twice, we know that at least one of these two executions must have resulted in the right answer. So to fix this protocol, essentially what they're going to do is we're going to reveal some form of mask form of the answer and then do an equality check. And we need to do this equality check with full security, meaning it should withstand active corruption of either participants. We're just going to check if the result of the computation in both these executions were the same. And if it, if, if it were, then we're going to reveal the answer. And now, as I said, the idea essentially is one of the answers is right. And the equality check makes sure that only when the answer is right, that's going to, only the right answer will be revealed. Why is that a one bit leakage? Well, the other computation where the garbler is, uh, uh, is the one corrupted could result in a bad evaluation or a bad computation, but the adversary gets one bit of information whether the bad computation's result equals the actual answer. And this is the one bit of information that the adversary gets. And this is what is leaked. And as you can see, the overhead of this protocol is in fact, not just constant, it is two. You run the garble circuit protocol twice. The equality check is only on the output. And this is a significantly simpler computation, even if you want it with a higher uh, security requirement. However, this uh, approach of Mohasel and Franklin works only for the Yao protocol, which is in the two-party setting. And as we know, this is only for Boolean computations. So what's our goal? Well, we want to extend this idea and try to do more. In fact, we are going to start with a more stringent requirement. We are going to say we want constant overhead. Well, we actually want one overhead. And we still want to keep that the leakage is at most one bit. So what are our results? Well, we have two main results. The first result is we extend the, the basic Mohasel Franklin dual execution paradigm where we show that if the function F satisfies an additional property that we call is G efficiently verifiable, then the complexity of our protocol is a passive Yao execution of the function f plus a passive yao execution of the function g a second theorem that we show is not just for boolean functions f but for arbitrary functions that have the same property which is g efficiently verifiable that i'll tell in a minute the overhead or the complexity of our protocol is going to be uh, a weakly private execution of the function f plus an active protocol to securely compute G. In both these cases, what you should think of is the, the protocol that we're going to consider for F is actually the passive protocol. And you know the protocol for G is the active protocol. So the overhead, in fact, is what we are trying to do, what secure computation we are going to do with this function G. Um, 
for the second thing, we're going to show that there are many classical protocols, the passive protocols that we already know satisfy this weekly private property. The classic GMW protocol, BGW, uh, uh, CCD, Damgard Ishai, all these protocols satisfy this weekly private notion. In fact, we choose a specific kind of weekly private notion that was introduced by Genkin et al. This is called uh, AMD uh, circuits, which says, uh, it, it, which uh, introduced this notion of these protocols that are secure, these passive protocols that are secure against active adversaries up to additive attacks. And all these protocols, in fact, fall under this category. And since uh, you know all of these extend even to the multi-party setting, theorem two applies to Boolean arithmetic, two-party, multi-party. And finally, we also extend this, like this uh, idea of weekly private, we show that the passive implementation of the distributed garbling protocol of Bellare et al. in the OT hybrid is weekly private. What does this give us? Well, it gives us, we can now instantiate the pi week of F using the distributed garbling protocol for Boolean computation. The added benefit is that this is constant round, as opposed to using GMW in the multi-party setting where the round complexity is the depth of the circuit. And this, in fact, among all our results, this theorem three, in fact, is the most uh, um, technically intensive uh, result of uh, our work. I won't talk much about it, but you know, please go uh, look into the paper. All right, so these are, these are our results. Uh, I haven't said, what does G efficiently verifiable mean? Okay, so we're going to say a function F is efficiently verifiable by another function G. If the complexity of G is significantly smaller than F, and G is a predicate that will evaluate to one on inputs X, Y, and Z, if and only if, Z is the result of the computation of F on X comma Y, okay? So G is sort of a checker for the result of the computation by F. And there are many, many families of algorithms that fall under this efficiently, uh, that are efficiently verifiable. Matrix multi multiplication can be checked um, just by using free walls algorithm. Max flow can be checked by, you know, uh, looking at the min cut. Uh, linear programming uh, computations can be checked by the complementary slackness condition. Convex hull can be checked in uh, by just looking at the convexity requirement on uh, each point in the hull. And all of these, you can see that checking is an order of magnitude in terms of the input size or even the computation size is an order of magnitude smaller than computing the function itself. So let's talk about the first result. And here we extend the result of Mohasel and Franklin, where we show that for a Boolean computation, we can get um, a complexity of garbled circuit and function F plus garbled circuit and function G. And this is uh, how we, we change the, uh, the, uh, the protocol. First, we're going to keep the first execution is going to be the same. Uh, Alice and Bob are going to e exchange a, a garbled circuit for the function f and try to compute it. The second, we're not going to do, the second computation is not going to be on the function f, instead it's going to be on the function g. So we have computed this mask form of this uh, output in the first one. We're going to use g to check whether this computation is right. And you know, if this computation, if the predicate returns true, then Alice is going to return the answer to, uh, to Bob. Now, you can, you can see here that just as before, we know that garbled circuit is already secure against active corruption uh, against the evaluator. So one of these two computations, the result must be right. So if the first computation, the result is right, then it doesn't matter what the second computation is. Whatever is revealed in the, set, in, in the last will be the right answer. Bob can still get one bit of leakage based on the, the, the second computation. That's as best because the result is just one bit of information. On the other hand, if the second computation is right, no matter what happens in the first computation, the second computation will, will give you, um, will return the right answer. And you know, G returns one only if the computation was right. So this gives us a, a two-party computation which, 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 which withstands active corruption against both parties, but we still have one bit of leakage. And as I said, G is smaller than F, so the overall uh, 
computation, the complexity of this is to do the garbled circuit for function f plus the garbled circuit uh, protocol for the function g. Now, moving on to theorem two here, we said that we can extend this if we have a weakly private uh, uh, protocol for the function f. Here, we're going to consider an arbitrary function. I'm still showing the diagram for two party, but this diagram works even for multi-party. So let's just instantiate it with one of the protocols before you know, talking about our generalization. The idea is that they're going to use, let's just assume they're, they're executing the classic GMW protocol in the OT hybrid. They are going to uh, put their inputs. They're going to learn shares of the result. Now with shares of the result, um, instead of revealing the answer as it is done in the passive protocol, before revealing the answer, they are going to check whether the result was right using an actively secure protocol for the function G. And this you know, just extends what I said for the dual execution in the previous slide with the Yao protocol. We first run this passive GMW protocol to learn shares of the answer. And then we check that the shares of the answer is right using an active protocol here. Okay, and here we need like a fully active protocol for this function G. So the idea is that no matter what the computation is, what happens before this malicious uh, implementation for function G will let the answer be revealed only if it is right. And as before, this will lead to a one bit uh, leakage. And the protocol here is, you know, the complexity of doing the passive protocol GMW plus an actively secure uh, protocol for the function G. We don't need to, it doesn't work just for GMW. It, all we need is this first protocol to be weakly private. And intuitively, weakly private here means that this, this protocol must already guarantee privacy against active adversaries. So it doesn't have to guarantee correctness, it only needs to guarantee privacy. And here, uh, the concrete instantiation of this weakly private notion we use is this notion introduced by Genkin et al, which says that, you know, um, a protocol is, like we consider protocols that are secure against active adversaries up to uh, algebraic attacks, meaning that they can add an arbitrary value to any of the wires in the computation. This allows us to instantiate this with various protocols, the GMW protocol, BGW, uh, CCD, DI, so forth. And as I said, another technical theorem we show here is that the passive uh, protocol for the distributed garbling by uh, Bellare et al. in the OT hybrid is in addition weakly private. So we can plug this in this framework. Uh, as I said, you know, G is, um, we say we, we, our results only hold for functions that are efficiently verifiable, where the complexity of G is significantly smaller than F. It doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be very, very small. It just needs to be an order of uh, magnitude uh, smaller. And then we can apply any, you know, of the current, concretely efficient protocols that we have for uh, active uh, security for G. One application in this paradigm that we have done, it doesn't fall exactly there, but it is you know, similar in spirit. We show for the perfect matching, uh, for the perfect matching uh, uh, use case. Here, you know, there have been several works, at least in the algorithms uh, literature, you know, many algebraic approaches for, uh, you know, matching and other matroid problems. The work of Harvey actually stands out here as one of the most efficient uh, uh, protocols for perfect matching. Uh, in fact, we can cast Harvey's algorithm when we, you know, you can make it into a passive protocol where all the parties need is a secure implementation, a passive secure implementation of matrix multiplication. Here you can think of it as, you know, Alice and Bob give shares of two matrices, they get shares of the product of the, uh, the shared matrices. So given this box, you should think of this as replacing the standard oblivious transfer. And, you know, then you can just run the protocol just like GMW in the OT hybrid, you can think of some version of that in the matrix multiplication hybrid. Uh, 
And in fact, this, this passive protocol gives uh, a communication complexity of order n squared. And this is interesting because even just naively computing this is order n to the omega, where omega is the matrix multiplication constant. So the passive protocol is order n squared, checking perfect matching is order n squared, and applying this paradigm, we get an active secure protocol for doing perfect matching with communication complexity order n squared, where um, with one bit of leakage. It doesn't quite fall under the paradigm of constant overhead from before, but this, this idea of combining uh, a passive protocol with a checker gives us a concretely efficient protocol for uh, perfect matching. This protocol is perfectly is weakly private. We can amplify it with uh, one bit leakage because we can check the perfect matching at the end of the passive protocol. One thing I, I, I skimmed over here, of course, is I, I, I gave the complexity in the matrix multiplication hybrid. You have to implement this and you can use kind of any additively homomorphic encryption to, to realize this matrix multiplication hybrid with the complexity that we want. Thank you.